Well, good morning, everybody. We have another wonderful project that we have been graciously invited to. This is Nick. He's the homeowner. And we have a situation where we have this concrete patio. And we've got several issues that have been exaggerated by water undermining the dirt. We've had also some burrowing animals that have gotten underneath and, and extracted some of the dirt. Nick, if you would just sort of briefly tell us what it is that you found and what we want to have finished and accomplish today. So what I found originally was uh, kind of a void on, uh, on that side. And then as I started to kind of pull dirt back, I, didn't, I recognized that there was even more washing away underneath. And so basically what I want to accomplish today is, you know, because it goes back about a foot or two. So what I, what I want to accomplish is to be able to fill that in to stop the dirt from continuing to wash out and then uh, shore up kind of this corner slash edge of the, of the slab. Well, Nick mentioned that we have this issue with the washouts and what we really want to do also is use the high compression load uh, bearing capability of this uh, two component foam. What we have is a product that can support 10,080 pounds per square foot. So the weight that is hanging out here, uh, sort of like a diving board, if you will, we're going to shore that up, make sure that there isn't any uh, unsupported concrete uh, all along this edge and it does go back along here now graciously Nick has excavated this so we have really good and easy access underneath and so from this point we're going to start the prep for the spray foam kits and then we'll get at the work as I've done before I've changed into my work shirt so I'll go do that now and then we'll get back and we'll get started on the project all right we're ready to go We've obviously unpacked the spray foam box. First thing, Nick, need to turn those valves on. Yeah, you have it right. Release the safety, push it off to the side, perfect. Okay, and point it towards the box, and go ahead. Yep, okay, we've got good flow from both. There we go. Now, in our investigation of the damage under here. We found a, a pretty deep burrowing hole and obviously that's what we have to get to first and so we're going to use these extensions that come in the in the box. Very simple. You just take one of the, the static mixers and you press it on like this. That's what these are for. It basically just gives you a little extra reach. Go ahead and attach this. It's a half turn click. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. The burrowing hole is about here and it goes back about gosh 20 24 inches maybe so we're going to move this over get it in range and then nick is going to get down and, and start all right and one thing when you're using these extensions you want to probe back to as far as you can into the hole actually if you can feel the back of the wall and then come out about three or four inches because you really don't want to immerse the tip of the extension in it because the foam's going to go in and it's going to advance pretty quickly. We're ready to go. So great job on filling that burrow and now what the, the, the nozzle that he has on right now is a conical and it's going to shoot. So you have about four feet that you could project this. So start at the back, work your way, you know, cl closing in the top, bottom, and just filling it in. There you go, like that. That's the way to do it. Okay, now work your way further south there. Now it's, it, now it's sticking. That's right, nice short burst, just like that. Yeah, now, there you go. Now, that's it. You got the hang of it now. Okay. Go ahead and, and change your bit to the, the fan. Now, you'll see a big difference in how it comes out and you can paint it more.
Okay, now do you want to move around and fill that, that deep hole? All right, here we go. Let's go over here. This actually might be a secondary hole, Nick. Yeah. Oh, here it comes, here it comes. Keep going. Keep pushing it. Excellent. Okay, perfect. Okay. Oh, Nick, that's great. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh, just like you did. Nice painting, yep. Can you fill in that hole? Which one? The one that was from the, the burrow hole. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, go ahead and fill that in, yeah. You don't have to be in a hurry with anything. Just spray some foam, two or three second shot, let it harden up and expand and harden up. Works really well. He's filling in everything so nicely. Oh yeah. Well, look, he's built that perfectly. He's got great expansion. That whole wall is filled in. Now we're going to move back uh, to where he was so that, because uh, that's all expanded and hard. So let's move back and we'll finish off that other area. If there's any gaps along the top with the concrete, make sure those are filled in. All right, perfect. Let that harden. Let's come around this other side over here. Oh, that's beautiful. Perfect application. Well done. We have come to the end of the first phase of the project. Nick, honestly, well done. Okay, just take a look. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, I mean, it filled in the gap, definitely. I mean, I, I, like, I like the way that it expands it all the way out to where basically I can just fill in the dirt and it'll be a whole lot less of a problem. Oh, fantastic. Uh, the technique you were employing at the end, really nice, just a smooth painting and, and letting the product expand and then coming back and doing it some more. One of the things that you will find that with a continual spray in one, one area, there you put a lot of weight of the foam right there and so it does tend to sort of blop out. So when you are you know, doing your own project, uh, do it in uh, slow sweeps in moderation. Let the foam expand and do its job and you'll find that everything is so much more controllable. I love the way the, the wall is built near perfectly vertical uh, right uh, along underneath the, the concrete slab. Again, I mentioned it in the beginning, this will support 10,080 pounds per square foot. I don't know how many square feet that is, but you could probably put 100,000 pounds right along the edge of that, that concrete slab. You wouldn't have an issue. Well done. Now, all of this now has been protected against runoff. We have filled the rodent uh, holes and, and tunnels very nicely. I think we, we caught some of that on video. Okay, so the next phase of the project is that we're going to go to the slab itself. When we did our hammer sounding, we found that there were a couple of areas that, that sounded hollow underneath the slab. And so what we're going to do is we're going to drill a few holes. We will inspect those holes with the endoscope, basically to see what we can see underneath and if there is a hollow. And then, uh, you know, we will uh, address the situation, moving from hole to hole and filling the voids. And uh, that will really bring the project to a close. Very satisfied so far. So we're gonna take a short break and get things set up and we'll be right back. Okay, we're about to start the second phase of the project. We were able to accomplish everything we needed to. We filled the entire north side and uh, that would be the west side of the wall or the, the slab. 
But in our investigations, Nick, let's find, let's show them what we found. Start here and then really nice, hard, solid. Move down here, still hard. But as we move in this direction, keep going. There we go, a little bit further. Okay, we're getting a, a, a greater and greater hollow sound as we move along this crack. We suspect that there has been a flow of water that has pushed either the dirt out from underneath here or it has compacted the door, dirt. So what we're going to do, we're going to drill some holes, 3 8 inch holes along this crack and we're going to use this endoscope to peer down into the holes to determine what's underneath there. Now it may not be very big, it may be just a little shallow uh, separation between the concrete but that's enough to bring up that echo sound. So let's find out what's really there and then we'll move on. So we have determined through our investigation that we're going to drill in that pattern right there. So go ahead and punch through the concrete. finished hammer sounding, drilling, and now with this uh, endoscope, it's got a camera and a light on the end of it, really an invaluable tool. And really, if you have a project like this, these are $46, I think, something like that, invaluable. This is a little Wi-Fi signal. Pick it up on your smartphone and uh, you can take it anywhere. So go ahead, let's probe these holes and see what we can see here. Real slow. Oh, very good image. Oh my goodness. Okay, hang on. We're coming to the bottom of the concrete. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And we just passed the concrete, I think. Yes. Uh -huh. Keep going. Oh, oh yes. Oh yeah. There's the powder that's dropped on the on the on the bottom. There's dirt. Keep coming down. Keep going. Oh yeah, I think we may have, keep going, keep going, more, more, that's fine, right there. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Okay, now put, squeeze your finger on the thing and pull it up to see what kind of depth we have. Oh yeah, we probably have, because this is four inch, this is, a, this is four inch, so we probably have two inches of void underneath there. Well done, okay, so it really confirmed what we heard with the hammer. Well, we've finished with the uh, visual examination. The endoscope turns out to be just a priceless tool. We were able to determine that we do have a void under each one of these four drill ports. However, the void sort of dips down and then comes back. So what you can kind of deduce is that a little bit of flow of water has moved the dirt a little more aggressively under this portion of the slab here. How we're going to address this is we have four holes with the two middle holes having a greater uh, void underneath them. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a foam wall right here and right here, kind of a dam. And then we're going to move to the other holes and we're going to fill, fill it up and let it flow. Now, we know we have some void underneath here. How far left and right it goes, we don't know. But we'll just methodically inject, 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 and then the, the foam will move. And then if we're doing it properly, which I believe is going to happen, is we're going to see a little bit of foam come out of this hole. And uh, that will know we, we, we have filled all these voids and the foam has traveled. We will then let that hole stay sealed off and we'll move to the next one. Now, Nick, come on over here. I want to show you something. These are prepped a little differently. These are just standard nozzles. And what we've done is I've wrapped about 
oh, six or seven revolutions of black electrician's tape on this. It works as a really good seal, I'll show you. So when you have it, you just put it in and then just a little, just a slight down pressure and you get a great seal so you don't have any pressurized foam coming up around the mixer. So if you'll go ahead and put that on the end of the gun. Okay, so let's set up. Now Nick has already charged the hoses. So all we have to do is we have to do our uh, test spray. So we'll, uh, let's, let's do this first. Make sure that we have a good flow out of the hoses. There we go, both of them coming out, excellent. Yep, and now attach and a little spray from, here we go. Ah, perfect. Okay, we're gonna move over here now. This is a little bit different application process. These are gonna be done in about three second bursts, no more, and we're gonna wait, and then we're gonna do it again, and we're gonna wait, and we're gonna do it again. Okay, go ahead. A little bit of down pressure, make the seal. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, baby, look at wow. this. This is fantastic. Keep going. A little bit. Yeah, we'll clean this up. So we know, oh, this is great. We know that we've got great seal. There we go. Okay. All right, let's move to the next one. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, you can hear it, Nick. Listen, did yeah. you hear that? We're forcing the air out. Well, it confirmed we have a pretty good void underneath here because this one reacted very nicely, very quickly, meaning the hole was very shallow, but this one's got quite a little depth to it. It's moving quite a ways. There's quite a bit of hole under there, just like we thought. Oh, here we go. Right here. Oh, fantastic. There we go, there we go. Now the nice thing is that the question always comes up, well, what if I put in too much? Well, when you have a pressure relief like that, you know you're not going to overfill it. And so you just want to just do things in moderation, nice and slowly, moving it along and uh, everything will work really well. Okay, just let it, let it sit for a second. Okay, let's move to the next hole. Mm -hmm. Got me. Got me. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. <laughs> All right. Safety. Safety glasses. <laughs> That's why I've got them on. <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> i got to go back to work. <laughs> what is all over you? <laughs> okay. Uh, here we go. Do your wife have any um, fingernail polish remover? I'm sure she does. That, that's what takes it off. <laughs> well, we know it's moving. That is good, good, good. I might have found a rodent hole. Whoa. Oh, felt that. Okay, that's good. Hang on a second. Set for a bit for yep. that one out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know what it did? It probably pushed through a void or something, a void wall. Ah. Hmm. Yeah, it's hmm. Well, Halloween's coming. Oh, huh. <laughs> There's a little bit of <laughs> laughter here. Um, <laughs> this is a good example. <laughs> When you uh, when you're filling these, give the, the give the holes a little bit of time to set up. Okay. Now, what about this? What are we going to do with this? Let this set up hard as you can. Okay. Come back now. If you have a um, scraper of any kind, or uh, the the sharp tip of a flat shovel, something like that, you just go along that. You pop all those off. If you have any kind of stain in the concrete. Very easy way to handle it. Standard brake cleaner and an aggressive uh, steel, uh, steel brush. 
cleans up very nicely. What's nice is that we know that we have a great seal all along here that uh, none of this is, is going to basically allow water to, to flow back down underneath the slab. So we've come to the conclusion of the project. Well done, Nick. Great um, supporting wall and uh, erosion prevention uh, there on the north side of the slab. And then here, ah, let's do this. Let's get back and let's go ahead and resound this. Okay, let's start over here where we know it's hard. Right here. Yeah, let's walk right along there, right along there. Ha! Oh yeah. It's very nice. All the sound of the hammering is now uniform. We don't have that big dip indicating uh, voids and hollows. So. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've had another great project. <laughs> That was good. That was good. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, we look forward to the, the next adventure for SecureSet and GRA Services. Thank you.